Hey there, my name is Helper Wesley, and today we'll be talking about touchscreen controls. So what we're going to tweak here to make it compatible with mobile is the little platformer level I made for the in-depth tutorial. Most games for a touchscreen are going to require different kinds of input, specific to the game that you're making. So to begin with, if we're making a mobile compatible game, we need to open the project manager, and in the game settings, open properties. Among the properties, we'll find the option for device orientation. Depending on what kind of game you're going to make, picking one of these is important. Since we're going to make a platformer game with a wider resolution, we're going to pick landscape. Picking a resolution that would make sense for a mobile device is important, but since devices are always changing, it's also important to make sure that your game will expand with the screen itself. And since our game is wider than it is tall, we're going to make it so that the game changes its width to fit the screen that it's in. If we didn't do that, we would get little black bars on the sides of the screen. If we preview the game, we can pick out what kind of controls we're going to need. And since it's just a basic platformer, we only really need left, right, and jump. So if I zoom out, we can see the whole screen, and what this black box is, is the actual resolution of your game, what will be in screen by default. So like I said, mobile controls will be different for each game, but the concept is pretty simple. All we have to do is create a new layer and call it UI or controls or whatever. And then we're going to add sprite objects that are going to act as the actual controls, where I'm just going to grab arrows from the asset library. And then I'll just put those into the game, line them up so they make sense with the game, and you'll probably decide to move these around a little bit based on the feedback you get from playtesting. And then we put all of those on the UI layer. And this way, no matter what happens with the camera on the base layer, the objects on the UI layer are going to stay put. And now if I preview the game, you'll see that they're there, but they're not doing anything. I still have to use the keyboard controls. So if we go into the event sheet, we can create a new event and put a comment above it to say that these are the mobile controls. And we add the condition if the cursor, or touch, is on the right arrow, then simulate pressing right for the player. And we can copy that event down and change it so that one is for the left button and then the other is for the jump button. So now, when I put my cursor over the button, the character will start moving. The problem here though, is that by default, the touch screen is just moving the virtual cursor around. And so if you wanted to have it set up so that your right hand is controlling jump, while your left hand is controlling the arrow keys, you'd be fighting back and forth over the position of the cursor. So instead, we have to set it up so that we're tracking touches instead of tracking where this virtual cursor is. But to do that, we need to go back to the event sheet. We create a new event with the condition at the beginning of scene, and then we'll click to add an action, and we'll search for touch, and then we'll find this event that toggles whether or not the touch screen moves the cursor so if we set this toggle to no, and then move this to the top of the event sheet, we'll have a game that allows us to touch each button individually, rather than trying to fight where the cursor is. So now we can do more than one thing at a time. You might not want to do this for every game, but for games with multiple buttons to press, you'll probably want to do this. And now back to what we said earlier about the game expanding to meet the screen that it's in, because we chose that it would expand by width, it's going to stay still on the left hand side but the right-hand side will expand or shrink to fit the screen. So the buttons on the left are probably fine, but the button here on the right will need to move to stay in screen. And then to do that, we just give it the anchor behavior. And for the left edge anchor, we set it to the window right side, and then leave the rest alone. And make sure that you're anchoring relative to the original screen size, so that it stays where it was. And now if we preview the game, and make the window bigger and smaller, you can see the button pulling itself back in place relative to the right hand side of the screen. And one final thing for mobile touch controls is this condition to check whether or not you're on a mobile device. You can use this condition at the beginning of scene to delete all of your mobile controls. So your events will stay there in the game, but without your controls there on screen, they don't get in the way of somebody playing on a desktop. As always, be sure to comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. Maybe we'll add it to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.